Welcome one and all to CounterPoint. My name is Cornell Bogdan and we have a guest that I've wanted on this show for a long, long time. One of the best, best musicians in the world and she happens to be um, right here in front of you right now to sing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Samantha Fish. is the name of the latest album from Samantha Fish. Yep. And it sort of looks like this right here. My producer, Greg, will make it fly right into my hands. But if you don't have a copy of Killer Be Kind, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, go out and get this thing. Samantha, I gotta ask, here you are. Nice little blonde girl playing some music. Killer Be Kind. How did you come up with that name? Um. Well, the song itself is kind of about the duality of love. It's about the start of a relationship versus the end. If you've ever been in a relationship, they usually start out great. They usually love everything about each other. Maybe by the end, the things you used to love are now things that have turned to, like, you know, nastier feelings, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, but I thought that that title sort of worked as a whole, <laughs> you know, could yeah. apply to a general sense of society right now. For sure. You know? It's just kind of a cryptic black and white title. It's just, you know, 
It's a choice. When you were building the album, was that the first song that you had? No, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of what, what the first song was. Love Letters, I think, was the first mm -hmm. official one that I had. You'll hear that, by the way, on Tangled Up in Blues. Yeah. But, um, but that was the first one, and then you built after that, and then... Um, do, you, do you write as you go? I mean... I'm always writing. Um, really, it's, I feel like it's, it's important as a songwriter to have as much material as possible, mm -hmm. and then go in and you, you kind of whittle down to the best, tell a cohesive story. But, you know, there's definitely a story. So you went in... And you come in with 20, 25, 30 songs. How does, how does your process as work? As many as you can possibly bring okay. in. I think, I think you're lucky. You know, for me, I'm lucky if I have that many. I'm, I always aim high and then, uh -huh. you know, stress, 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 stress. I get rid of stuff I don't like all the time, too. I've written so many songs that I've discarded over the years. It's, that's kind of normal, too. And, um, and, and do you write with guitar? I write with the guitar. I write with, um, you know, I'll, I'll mess around with a little bit on the keys, um, barely. Uh-huh. <laughs> But I, I collaborate with other songwriters. I, I kind of, you know, it's any which way up the mountain you can get. When did you know you had it in your blood? Um, that, that, okay, this is what I'm going to do for a living. Mom and dad, mom and dad, I'm sorry. I know you wanted me to, but this, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I was probably 17 okay. when I made that decision. I started playing guitar around 15. I was like a painfully shy person when I was a kid just really quiet and I, I never would have imagined 10 years ago or 15 years ago I'd be on stage you know it's right that's like painful <laughs> right. um but uh do you still get that feeling every now sometimes uh -huh. I do I I'm good at I'm good at like playing but when it comes sometimes to talking it's a little weird I don't know what to, you know yeah what I mean? right right people want to get inside your head like today well yeah. not you you're yeah. cool <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just mean like sometimes being in front of an audience and oh, like yeah. making small talk yeah. with an audience. Like, so guys, thanks for coming yeah. to the show. <laughs> it feels a little weird, you know. I mean, there's there's still, I think we're all still like ourselves from when we were, you know, young. But honestly, I, I knew when I was 17. And how tough was it to be 17 years old and also a female? Uh -huh. being, a, being a father of two daughters, I just root for the girls out there. Yeah. I root for the girls, man. And it's got to be a little bit a little bit tougher for you. You know, I don't know the other perspectives. So there's yeah, that. Right, right. Um, I only I've only ever been That's that's a nice way to put it. But at the same time, I mean everybody has a struggle. I do think for women in the workforce, it's you know, there I just didn't feel like I had a lot of representation when I first mm -hmm. started. I didn't feel like there were a lot of females in the mainstream view. I know there were a lot of them now, mm -hmm. but back then you'd you, you're not really presented with many options, so you don't. If you don't see it, you don't think that it's really possible. Right. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, no. It's just kind of a part of a, a psych, you know, a psyche. Well, um, I am just so impressed about. Uh, I was talking to Anna Popovich, and I don't mean to throw names around, but she goes. Every town she plays in, she stops at a school and yeah. goes and visits the music class. And then she invites the kids to come out to see her show. And she was telling me there was a, uh, a class, I think, in Indiana. And she had 16 or 18 kids showing up. And out of them, 12 of them were guitar players. Oh, wow. And all 12 guitar players were female. That's awesome. That's so great. You guys are inspiring so many young ladies nowadays that, okay, I don't necessarily have to play the piano. I don't necessarily have to play. I can play guitar and I can rock my socks off. Yeah. You, do you feel that? that I'm sure you've yeah, had little ones come up to you and say. I feel it. I've experienced that myself personally. You know, I, I really think it, it just boils down to, to having an example, mm -hmm. you know, there's, we kind of grow up with these roles in our mind. It's like this is a female role. This is the this is what right. this is what boys do. This is what girls do, and it, it we don't realize the kind of mental blocks that that actually puts up for us later in life. You know, might keep you from pursuing something because you never really saw it done. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's just it's just a, a good time to be you know you know, just go out there, be unapologetic, be whoever that you want to be, and have fun. Yeah, just be yeah. whoever you want to be. Uh, now you didn't start off as a guitar player. Um, I, well, I mean, come on. I, I started off on drums, but yeah. that's like not really a thing. Your and manager I, told me that. Uh, yeah. Do you ever get behind the drum set anymore? Like on stage, no. Uh, I mean, ever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, but and? it'd be laughable in front of people. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no. Uh -uh. 
No way. <laughs> so how did you make the, 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 the transfer from being a drummer to a guitar player, singer? Well, I think that I really wanted to front a band, but being so shy, my dad played guitar and his friends all played guitar and my sister played guitar. So I, was, I did the rebellious thing. I was like, well, I'm just going to be the drummer then. Uh -huh, I'm going to learn how to uh -huh. play the drums. And I started with that. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, I think you just become, I, I don't even like to say I'm, now I'm a guitar player. I was a drummer, but now I'm a guitar player. I'm, I was, I just became a musician, you know, right. and I, I think it's important, you know, you don't have to stick to one instrument and that's just your thing, you know, like learn it, learn as much as you can. I think everybody should start on the drums. Everybody. If you're going to play music, it's counting to four is still the most important thing. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's like, that's what people dance to. So, um, you know, having rhythm, I, I think it really helped me when I moved to guitar, when I picked it up and started singing. I just innately had this sense of rhythm, which helped. Well, let's uh, let's go back to those earlier days. Can you can you play something that uh, maybe you first learned on guitar and yeah. became like a staple when you were a, a youngin? Okay, we talked about this earlier, and I, yes. I was telling these guys in here, it's like, I struggle to remember my birthday, um, <laughs> so remembering a song from 15 years ago is tough, but yeah. I just jogged my memory with this, but I'm only going to play, play a, little bit a verse and a yeah. chorus, yeah. Yeah. and I'm probably going to mess it up. All right. Who didn't like that band, right? No. I don't play it yet. Little Rolling Stones. I'm standing. I'm standing. Nice, thank you. Very, very nice. You can't go wrong with the Rolling Stones. Can uh, you ever go wrong no, with the Rolling Stones? The catalog's just so deep and great and everything. Yeah, I know. I'm a huge Stones fan. Did I grew you? up listening to the radio, so it was like classic rock and guitar. Just that's where you start. Well, did you ever do the coffee house thing just by yourself in an acoustic guitar? No. No, you'll... doing acoustic gigs, I do oh, them every scary, once in a while. It's scary, isn't it? It's like worse than anything, <laughs> it's worse than public speaking. <laughs> Yeah, it was terrible. It's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, and, and you, I do it though. I like I always there's like a couple times a year where we do a festival and they're like, Does Samantha want to do an acoustic set? And I always say yes and then about thirty minutes before I freak out and I go, Why did I accept yeah, this? Yeah. I don't know how to do it. Like there's like a whole different you know, I get to oh, the show sure. and I'm like Yeah, you know, I'm like, that doesn't work. You gotta like you have to approach things very differently on an acoustic gig. Do you remember MTV Unplugged? Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah, love you, that. Yeah, you could tell what bands were really, really great bands because they could play Unplugged, and then you could tell the bands that were like, ooh, man, yeah. maybe, maybe you shouldn't have done that. But, yeah, it's in the future here. Samantha Fish oh. Unplugged, watch for I it. And, they bring it back. Yeah. Hey, do um, they, they still do that? I don't, I don't think. No, MTV doesn't even play music yeah, anymore. Right. Yeah, it's 16 and pregnant. That's what's on that MTV now. For me, so. Yeah, so yeah, it, that's what you have to aspire to nowadays. But all right, so Killer Be Kind. And by the way, one thing that I forgot to mention when I was doing the whole hype on the album, 
Not only is it a great album, but it stayed at number one on the blues charts throughout the entire world for, I think, a couple of months. I don't know. Yeah, it did. I'm terrible. No, uh, and uh, it my, yes, it did. Okay. I'm telling you right now, it did. And to have an album that you probably labor over and every part of it becomes a piece of sweat falling off you. Yeah. And when it finally comes out to see the world appreciate it, especially in this day and age where everybody's just downloading one track on iTunes, yeah. to know that you know people really care about an album. Yeah, no, that it means a lot. Because um, we've had a lot of we, the grand we, people on my team, mm -hmm. manager, you know, everybody. It's like you have these conversations about the world just isn't, you know, we're not doing albums anymore. Yeah, it's disposable. And, and I really like the album in the sense of transformation. You can do a full transformation with an album. I'm sure you can do that with a single, but I feel like when you put out an album, there's a whole concept and a story that goes with it. And I'm just in love with that idea. Mm -hmm. And it might be a little old school, but, you know, I think in the future we'll adopt a little bit of the both. You mm -hmm. know, I, I still really like the piece of art that you deliver with an album, but there is like a constant thing that feeds. You got to feed the crowd more. I mean, people... People are used to consuming music at a quicker rate. You know, it's it's like entertainment's just sped up in the last ten years. Well, what I've really found out about your with your latest record is yes, you're categorized as a blues artist, but this album has a little bit of something for everybody on Thank it. You. you know, there's even that torch style voice that you have in there that that Billy Holiday type of oh, you know you. seriously and did you did you want to be that diversified on the uh, on the yeah I mean really when I'm writing a song I don't come from this position of like oh I'm going to do a song that's so blues or I'm going to do a song that's not blues at all like I, I just write a song uh -huh. and and then you know really the the bluesy thing that I think people kind of associate with with my music is how I play guitar, mm -hmm. how I deliver a vocal, um, you know, because I feel like that's the cornerstone of my education in music. Mm -hmm. That's what I really dove into. You know, it's what I still really love. But I love all these other styles of music. I feel like, I feel like Killer Be Kind kind of ranges into, you know, it's like rock and roll and R and B and soul and there's even like pop. Yes, there is. Yeah. Um, which isn't a, as dirty of a word as we like to pretend it is. It's like, it's you know, good it's, pop. You know, yeah. Stones were pop yeah, 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 exactly. It's very good pop. I remember when pop radio, this is how old I am, you, you'd listen to a top 40 station and you heard James Brown, Johnny Cash, the Rolling Stones, yeah. you know, Love and yeah. Spoonful all on one, you know, yeah. that's what pop radio used to be. I just kind of really, I like experimental tones with the guitar. I wanted to, I wanted to really explore different terrain with that. And mm. I, I had the opportunity to, I really wanted to. I feel like I've always sang better live than I did in a studio. And I felt like this was the first time that I really, I think it's just about calming down and being confident, knowing you can do it. It's just a different approach. Something so weird about having headphones on and singing in a little box than being on stage and performing in front of others. There's, right. There's a different energy. There's a different, you know, vibe for sure. But, you know, on this record, I really, I was like, I really want to showcase my voice. I want to showcase my my songwriting, and I want to showcase, you know, the guitar in different ways. You know, not just here's a screaming solo. It's like let's let's make it a texture. Let's let's set like um, you know, let's let's put a sonic palette out there that like kind of sets a tone and a mood, and it it just was fun. I noticed in your guitar playing, and by the way, Guitar World magazine, uh, top thirty guitar players in the world right now, guess who's on the list? Uh, including don't, names don't. including names like Eric Clapton, Joe Bonamassa, Derek Trucks, Samantha Fish is on that list. You know That's a long way from a little drummer. You know, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you, like you don't like compliments. It's, you hate them. It's subjective, isn't it? Well lining guitar players up. Everybody's just different, you know, but yeah. I really appreciate it. It's 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 an honor. I mean, honestly, I never thought in a million years I'd see myself in Guitar World. We, I mean, all my uncles had subscriptions to that magazine. Right. We had subscriptions to it. it it's kind of, um, a, it's mind-blowing. It's a huge honor. Um, but I, I always kind of see myself as somebody who's still going someplace else. You know? I'm still yeah. going. I've still got ways to go. The you sky's know? the limit. Yeah. The sky's the limit. When, um, when you think of when you want to be inspired, 
when you're driving around on your tour bus and your vans, you know, going from town to town, when you want to be inspired, what do you listen to? Um, is, there, is there is somebody you always go back to? No, I mean, I, I kind of... It'd freak you out. Like, the, it's pretty vast. I, I, oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> it's, it's fast. I mean, I, I can go, I can run the gamut with you if you want. I like, um, you know, if we go through blues, I, I was, I really got heavily into like, you know, the fat possum sounds. Uh -huh. Um, I like Darl Burnside and Junior Kimbro uh -huh. and, Remember when the Black Keys were on that label? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, that's where they they did. Oh my they were, God! They were doing Junior Kimbrough covers. <laughs> yes. And yep. then and then every like to me that's why I was kind of like Jack White, you know, the Black Keys, this whole like alternative rock scene. It's mm -hmm. like to me, it's like that's blues, you know, which is what that's what I was seeing. It's a fact. It is to me, uh -huh. and and they even say it, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you know, they're kind of overlooked in some blues communities. I'm like, no, Jack White's like. Killer yeah. blues guitar player, yeah. um, you know. But I listen to a lot of contemporary stuff. I listen to a lot of old stuff. I mean, I grew up listening to classic rock, so Tom Petty, Rolling Stones, and I like new stuff too. I'm always if somebody new comes out that everybody's talking about, I'm like, I gotta check out this Billie Eilish chick. Uh -huh. You know, I, I love Lady Gaga. I love I love people who are just brave and fierce, and you know. There had performers. to be there had to be some like Frank Sinatra in I love your Frank life. Sinatra. Yeah, because he's he, one of the greatest singers of all time. Just. I, nobody can sing like that. Oh, but you but, think it's so simple. It's not. Nobody can sing like that. That, um, that album, folks, though, I can't push this enough. Make sure you get it. And there is just some phenomenal, phenomenal stuff to listen to. And please listen to it like an album from beginning to end. Okay? From beginning to end. There's a lot of love and care put into an album. You know, yeah. everything from the artwork to the, to the sequence. Right. You know, tells a story. It's, it, it is nice when people listen to it from top to bottom. You know, the, like it, it, it's it paints and, a and picture. To go back to your question before, how does that feel that people are still buying albums? It, it's a good feeling. Yeah, you know, because they could just pick their favorite song off of it. I'm really glad people are giving the full thing a chance. It's nice. I know there's not a lot of time to rest when you're a rock and roll road dog, but um, what are your plans for the future? Um, oh gosh, I, I sure have some big stuff coming up. Okay. Personal and, you know, for my, you know, we're, we're basically touring till the end of time. It's like an indefinite amount of touring. <laughs> we're going to Europe. Um, I, I know like this next year is going to be insane. The Killer Be Kind tour. Mm -hmm. um, my record label, Wild Heart Records. Mm -hmm. uh, we just put out Nicholas David's album. We have three artists on the roster right now. Um, I'm doing a. Festival. Are you signing them? Yeah, I'm producing. That's you, that. That is. I produce. That is. So you. This is my label. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's why I wore the shirt. Wow. Very good. Um, no, I started a record label with my manager. Yes. Ruben Williams, and I've been producing records and putting them out, and now we have a, a roster. I'm keeping it small for the time being because I really want to focus on setting a good foundation and then growing it from there you know but it's just i i i know where i started i had such a good foundation and a team and i'd have nothing if i didn't have my team uh -huh. you know if everybody you really need that as an artist you do you do you need you need a group it's really hard to do it all on your own so i wanted to be able to provide that service for others who are you know, I mean, Nicholas that is, Dave is that is so talented. cool. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about him. He's amazingly talented. He's from Minneapolis. Okay. Um, I met him when he was in Devin Allman's band. Okay. And um, he had met him through Nicholas got like third place. On so the he place. was in Honey Tribe or or Devin's oh, the, uh, De Devin solo band. Devin's or the solo Devin, band. Yeah. Okay. Right before they went and did Allman Bet. Okay. It was like when Devin was doing, he he brought um All right. Dwayne into the band. I met him then. But Nicholas is incredibly talented. He's from Minneapolis. Charlie Wooten's on the label. Nice. Charlie played in the Royal Southern Brotherhood. Sure. And he played on my second record. Okay. So we've known each other a long time. And then Jonathan Long um, was the first flagship artist. And he's out of Baton Rouge. Amazing guitar player, songwriter, just incredible. And all these guys are not, like, it's like we're, it, it's, we're coming from the standpoint of, like, it's kind of a blues label, but all these guys just, like, really, mm -hmm. they're vast, you know? I, I, it seems to be the theme of my life. Now, would you mind an aspiring artist out there who is watching this to send you in a tape? I, I love getting tapes. I'm, I'm always very nice. upfront about, you know, you have to be smart about it. Yes. That's, that's the thing I'm learning on the other side of it. It's like, I want to make a record for everybody, but I also have to pay for it. 
<laughs> yeah, but also, uh, um, gotta, you, you know, you're going to take the time. time to probably listen to it, you know? It just takes time. Yeah, it, it does. It takes time. And I really, you know, f for now, I know I'm focusing on the roster that we have to just try and, you know, get some really good seeds planted. Yeah. The other big thing, I'm a promoter now, too. <laughs> We're doing a festival in January. Really? Samantha Fish's Cigar Box Guitar Festival in New Orleans. Yep. Sweet. Is that where you're living full time now? I am. I am there. You a know, lot. I, I'm there a lot. Okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and so it's Samantha Fish's Cigar Box. Samantha Fish's Cigar Box Guitar Festival, and we're in New Orleans, January 15th through the 18th. We have Very a nice. And if that's too much of a mouthful, you can just Google it and the guitar. And and, and the artists have already been announced? Yeah. Who's playing? Jimbo Mathis. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan Long, Big Chief Monk Boudreau, Sugarcane Jane, Damon Fowler, Waylon Thibodeau. Yeah. It, it, it's a lot. Oh. A lot. And so promoter, yeah. <laughs> record exec. <laughs> My good uh, actor, actress. I'd love to do that. Yeah, I know I that's gonna. Uh, I'm telling you what, it's not far away. I, I love you doing You are a videos. very photogenic individual. Thanks. You know, you look, you look, you look great on camera. Now that that's gonna happen. I, I've I've been wanting. That's something I really want to do. Yeah, I, um, it's gonna happen. I'm just really busy right now, but it's all. It's something I'm always like. I'm gonna be kicking myself down the road if I don't try and figure that out. But you know, again. Down the One road. thing at a time. Well, I could sit here and speak with you all night long. You are just a wonderful musician. Thanks. And can you can you give our audience one more? Would sure. you mind for the what you for want? The, let's do let's do another one off a of killer because okay okay. Um, let me think. Something that, something that will make you happy. Ooh, something that makes you happy. Yeah. They're all such bummer of songs. No, they're not. No. All right, I'll do Dream Girl just because I yeah. I wrote it all on right. the acoustic. It's kind of designed for this. Okay. It's totally not gonna make you happy though. <laughs> it's a sad, sad song. Um, say I'm your dream girl, drift away with me. We spread our wings and fly as far as we can see. When you're ready, you go back to the ground, and I can calm down.
the, uh, the, the beautiful Samantha Fish, the talented Samantha Fish. Her fingers just move so nice along that guitar. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this has been Counterpoint. This has been my guest, Samantha Fish. You guys be nice to each other out there. Peace.